Hello, Bishop William Johnson coming to you from the Cathedral of St. Ambrose here in Des Moines. Before I move into my reflection, I just want to give you a heads up that from this point forward, now that we've resumed uh, public masses on the weekends in the, throughout the entire diocese, including here in central Iowa, uh, we won't be posting any of these reflections until Monday or so. So there'll be a little bit of lag time, even though we'll continue to live stream the mass. And so you'll continue to have that opportunity for those who prefer to, to remain at home and watch remotely. Many of us have been immersed in so many Zoom meetings these days. I always get a kind of a chuckle when we're Zooming with some of my colleagues who are at home and they're there, the men who are coming to from maybe their basement room or study or something like that. And then the door cracks open and their young children run up to daddy and daddy and they jump up into their lap and it's so beautiful. They're not ashamed to acknowledge their father. And most of the time the fathers are happy to embrace them and, and say, these are my children, and to introduce them to the rest of those partaking in the meeting. That willingness to acknowledge one another, to declare who is the Father and the Father of children. Jesus says that the Father in heaven knows each of us, knows the sparrows and species that he has created. He has created each of us as his own sons and daughters. But he knows us even more, not simply as creatures after his own heart. He knows us because his son, Jesus, acknowledges us, confesses us, and witnesses to us that we are in him and he is in us. A young priest was sharing with me recently that all of his classmates who've gotten married and find themselves biological fathers, trying to be now heads of households and raising children, he says he sees a kind of evolution for them, that they, right away they wanted to be the cool dad, and then after a while that that kind of falls away, that they're no longer interested in winning the adulation of their kids. Maybe they're not so worried about how they look in their physique. They may be a little paunch, and maybe as they start to bald a little bit. I know my stylist for a long time, Karen, uh, her job got easier because she had to, fewer hairs to deal with when she works with me. And so these fathers who are free and not trying to win the approval, their heart of hearts, they care most. The objects that they are given by God in their sacred vocation as dads. And they're free to do so, they're free to love, even when there's friction or there's not a lot of affirmation coming their way, ultimately because they believe themselves to be the objects of God's great care. And from that trust comes great strength, great insight, and tenderness. Fear of Jesus' Father makes us men. The holy fear of not living up to our vocation is not something then that we are fraught with anxiety, but it frees us then to do what we do, to share that which is most in our heart, and to be people of integrity as we do so. Yes, at times, not to care about the things that the world thinks are so important. Of course, right now, the society maybe has less care for fathers than it once did. Recreational relationships, friends with benefits but without commitments, the sense that marriage can be whatever we want it to be, that there's not something distinctive brought by each of the father and the mother in a relationship sealed by God. All of these things then leave us with more children, with single moms, and fatherless households. And the result of that is a great sucking sound in our society, the sound of trust, the peace of confidence that we are loved by God, that God cares about each of us as his only creation. Luigi Gisani talks about the way in which an integrated person has an intuitive sense of who around him or her can be trusted. He uses the example of being on a train in those moments when maybe we want to step out of the train car and go, and can we trust to leave our luggage there? Will it still be there when we get back? Maybe we'd say in an airport, you know, can we trust that person if we leave our bag there that they won't have the, the bomb squad coming to, to get it? For men who are realizing their vocation, they recognize ultimately if they're truly integrating their faith with who they are, that they don't trust ultimately in themselves. Hey, I've got this. But that our trust is in the Father of Jesus Christ. And our trust is in the church, the body of believers with whom we must rely upon as we're still coming to full maturity and freedom. 
We know for some men the struggle with the internet and addictions that might enslave us is something that's a stumbling block for them. Some have enlisted accountability partners, men with whom they reveal their interior life. They do so not so that they might be accused, but they might be embraced and have that partner once in a while remind them who they are, that there's a deeper truth about each of us than that we are sinners, but that we are a beloved son, a beloved daughter of God. The church provides so many great examples for us of men who realize their vocation. Certainly St. Joseph is at the forefront, but this week we celebrate the feast of Thomas More as well that 16th century chancellor of England who find, found himself in a tough spot in his service of King Henry VIII, who wanted his marriage annulled by the Pope so that he could get remarried. St. Thomas More is known as a great witness to the power of conscience in the political realm, but he was also one who with his wife Jane had four children, and then when Jane died after six years of marriage and he married Aunt Alice, he took into his household Alice's daughter and then one more child from the neighborhood whose mom had died and one more so that ultimately he was not only a biological father, an adopted father, a stepfather to a total of seven children. And so his fidelity in living that out I think was that source of inner strength for him as a man of, of the, the world, a man and citizen of society. So that even when his own family pressed him, just yield to the king, just go along with the flow, he had to resist them at that critical moment in his witness to the truth of Christ. At that moment, he did not care what even his own family asked of him, but because he cared ever more that he would leave a lasting legacy to them and to us. He, he shows the world and reveals to the world that his fathers, that we count on the Son, and that Son is delighted to profess our name before his heavenly Father. Thank you for listening. Let's continue to pray for each other.